Hello everyone, welcome back. If you are here, it's probably because you are an early stage researcher dealing with one of the biggest problem you might encounter in data collection. Of course, today we will particularly deal with this problem in relation to the field of applied linguistics or ethnographic studies. This problem is called the observer paradox. And today we will see few tips you might want to keep in your mind in order to overcome this problem and potentially get better data. Let's have a look at what is the observer paradox. In order to understand better what is the observer's paradox, you might want to imagine a specific setting. Let's say you are a researcher of sociolinguistics and you want to collect data from a specific community, a specific linguistic community. Let's take, for instance, Chinese speakers living in Italy. So the first thing you do is finding the community, making them sign the privacy agreement and get them to agree on being recorded. On the first day of your recording, you arrive at your data collection place uh, with your recording tools. So this can be a video camera, this can be just a recorder. You set everything up and you start recording. But right away, or at least when you arrive at your home and start listening to the data you have recorded, you notice that the participants were shy, the participants were not talking naturally. So what is going on here? Well, what you just have been noticing, it's exactly this observer's paradox. Basically, uh, participants are becoming aware that they're being observed by you, by your recorder, by your video camera, and their performances are less natural. In this sense, we can say that speakers are controlling their communication. They're making it less casual, less systematic. This, as a consequence, will be reflected in your data and you will particularly notice it in your analysis because your data will not reveal the speaker's vernacular, so the spontaneous way, the natural way speakers are communicating. Laboff, in 1972, proposed one way of potentially solving the observer's paradox, and this way it's by collecting data within a limited group of participants, the observer's paradox in this sense will not be solved right away, but with time. In fact, your participants will gradually be less aware, paying less attention to your recording tools and to your presence and potentially produce more natural and spontaneous data. So according to this method of solving the observer's paradox. While transcribing and selecting your data, you might want to avoid considering the first recordings, but rather only the recordings you did later on when the participants were less aware, paying less attention to the recording process. The second method to overcome the observer paradox was proposed by Leslie Milroy. According to this method of solving this paradox, you should become closer to the participants you intend to record. Let's say you should become a member of the community you intend to collect data from. Through this method of solving the observer paradox, what is happening is that your presence and, as a consequence, your recording tools will become part of the normal environment where the participants are every day or usually um, coming together and producing communicative data. 
as a consequence what you will get is um, the real speaker's vernacular because they are they got used to your presence and they are less of aware of the way they are speaking of course what we have seen today are only few tips on how to potentially overcome the observer's paradox of course this is entirely um, related to the context in which you're collecting the data entirely connected to the specific linguistic community you're planning to record you should keep in mind the specific environment where you will be recording the specific participants my suggestion is to try to keep in mind both these methodologies to solve it and let's see if you manage to partially overcome the observer's paradox thank you very much